Good evening, I'm Bree Teeley with your only local news on the South Coast. It is hard to believe some of these boats are made out of cardboard with their elaborate design. But the real question is, will it float? That was a lot of fun. The cardboard boat races are sponsored by the Lakeside Chamber of Commerce and feature four categories, polywogs, kids, juniors, and adults. Here at the Oregon Divisional Chainsaw Sculpting Championships, it's amazing the artwork that comes out of a single piece of wood. And as you can imagine, sawdust covers the floor. Cars are crashing, American flags are waving, and that can mean only one thing in Coos Bay, Demolition Derby at the Speedway. The convicted killer of Leah Freeman wants another chance. Attorneys for Nick McGuffin have filed a motion for a retrial. While Scotch Burn may be a beautiful plant, it's also highly invasive and spreads quickly once it's on your property. In order to get rid of it, you're going to want to get to it before the seed pods pop. And that happens when the weather turns warm. A dragon, a race car, and a rocket, all made out of cardboard and meant to float in the water. We, of course, are talking about Lakeside's annual cardboard boat races, which were a blast. KCBY had its very own vessel, inspired by our news director, Tim Navani, and it's the kind of event you have to see to believe. Court officials are still picking up the puzzle pieces from Friday's tsunami surge, which caused damage to finger piers on G-Dock and ruined pilings on D-Dock. Thankfully, no boats were sunk and no one was hurt. Congressman DeFazio says they'll have to decide whether Coos Bay should be included in Oregon's disaster declaration. There's some serious damage here to the docks. We're talking probably, uh, you know, a pretty substantial bill for repair. There's questions about navigability because there's uh, been big, some large sand movement. Uh, and then we've got to see, they've, you know, whether or not they have insurance coverage, whether or not we could get Coos Bay included in the disaster uh, declaration. County commissioners will now determine whether there's enough damage here to qualify for disaster relief. Port authorities have said they believe there's close to $70,000 worth of repairs that need to be made. DeFazio says commissioners in Curry County passed a request for a disaster declaration on Sunday. Although the damage in our neck of the woods isn't as extensive, he says alert systems up and down the coast uncovered real problems. While some tsunami sirens worked and some didn't, DeFazio says different areas chose to sound the alarm at different times, and the reverse 911 system in Curry County was totally defeated. What we're worried about is a quake of a similar magnitude, proximate to the Oregon coast, much shorter warning time. Uh, people are going to have to respond very quickly. Uh, down in, uh, in Curry County, the reverse 911 system didn't work because they had so many incoming calls they couldn't call out. The congressman says the state will review mandatory warnings and set them at a standard time so everyone receives a warning in uniform fashion. Now, while you may or may not be able to hear those alerts, DeFazio says one of the best ways to receive information is via a weather radio. Every house was equipped with a small radio, so if there was an escape, uh, it would tell them the wind direction and what to do. Uh, I'm wondering, you know, whether that should be part of the future is looking at, uh, you know, having people with these very inexpensive little, you know, alert units. All in all, DeFazio says Friday's natural disaster was almost a practice drill for everybody, Thank but it's God. important for all local residents to be aware of what to do in case of an emergency. In Charleston, I'm Bree Teeley, KCBY News. If you recognize that girl with the side ponytail, it's because you most likely watch her every morning on KCBY. Angela Lauren and myself teamed up to take down the competition in Lakeside's annual cardboard boat races. It is hard to believe some of these boats are made out of cardboard with their elaborate design. But the real question is, will it float? That being said, we grilled the guys who constructed this masterpiece out of cardboard plastic and about 10 rolls of duct tape. They were unsure of whether it would get the job done. Now, have you guys been practicing at all? No, no. <laughs> Not at all. We don't even know if that thing is going to float. 
<laughs> I don't know if it's gonna keep us in there, but uh, we're gonna try. <laughs> and by the looks of things, it did. They finished second in the race that's about 200 feet long. Also on our radar, the Walt Poorhouse team, who participates every year and came out with two creations, a bus and a rocket, they finished first. The Coos Bay Speedway also put together a cool cardboard boat shaped like a race car. In case you were wondering, our vessel, the Navat, named after our news director Tim Navat, came in fourth and we decorated it 80s style. In Lakeside, I'm Bree Teeley. It's not your average high school woodshop class. Out on a job site in Coos Bay, advanced Marshfield High School carpentry students are learning what it takes to build a house, up close and personal. It's all part of carpentry teacher and pirate basketball coach Jesse Ainsworth's vision when he took over the department. I wanted to teach a real construction class. I didn't want to teach it out of a shop. And uh, that was my vision and we've been doing it for five years now. And We've probably been on 20 to 30 different builds, and uh, every year it seems like we do something different, but it's always real construction. These high school seniors start out as freshmen in Ainsworth's intro to carpentry class, and if they stick with it, they move on up the ladder, earning a spot in his advanced class. Ainsworth says these young men are learning real-life skills that aren't taught in a classroom. The majority of these boys actually go into the construction field. We've been actually teaching this class for five years now and uh, so far we have 15 kids in the construction industry from electricians to plumbers to carpenters um, so it's actually turning out real workers in the real world um, and they're getting hands-on experience and senior student Kai Stuffelbean agrees advanced carpentry is his favorite class and he finds that being out in the field helps the knowledge stick you can learn it in the classroom but yet you could go out to the job site and you are still not knowing what you're doing unless someone's showing you actually showing you and then you're, you're learning more on top of that and so and it usually stays in your head and you just have to ask a lot of questions and get it down. What was once an empty lot now lies structure and a foundation. These Coos Bay High School students are learning the tools of the trade and earning a nationally recognized certification while doing so. One of just five programs in the entire United States, Marshfield High School's construction program is nationally certified. Kids who spend two years in the program receive a certificate that's a great addition to any high school student's resume. In Coos Bay, I'm Bree Teeley, KCBY News.